Welcome, my constant reader friends. I'm Tad, and this is Tad Reads Books and Stuff. All right, so this is the next episode in the Marvelous Team-Up. Uh, Graz at the GKBC, and I read graphic novels. <clears throat> we do a review of uh, the portion that we're reading every two weeks or so. So this is the next one in A Righteous Thirst for Vengeance. If you've been watching this series, awesome. If you have this, then you know how good it is. I am just, I read this and my, I find my mouth is like just open. I'm catching flies, not because I'm sleeping, because I'm just enthralled with this book, this story. The story, let me tell you, it's violent. It is a violent story. It's interesting. Um, I'm using all these like adjectives. The artwork is what is so amazing the artwork and the colorists so the writer is rick remender and the artist is andre lima arajo and the colorist is chris o'halloran and the colors are so awesome that's one of the reasons why his name is is on the cover of the book it's really awesome i've shown you if you've watched some of the videos before all right so where are we we're on chapter seven eight and nine in this episode uh, so, starts off in Chapter 7. We're in Hemlock Valley, British Columbia. I can show you that. There's not a lot I can show you in this. It, again, it is so violent. Um, and it's so interesting. I've, I've got some notes down here. Really, comic books are hard for me to do because I do give away so much information. But as I've talked about it in this book, Again, the artwork is a lot of it. So you can go sometimes one, two, three, four, five, six, almost seven pages without any um, uh, speaking bubbles, no dialogue, no explanation. You're just watching it unfold like a movie. And it's awesome. So... What we're doing here in Chapter 7 is we're in Hemlock Valley. That's where they're hiding out. So that's where Buddy and uh, Xavier are hiding out from the evil madman guy that's hunting them down. And Xavier wakes up in the morning. Buddy's still asleep. He goes outside and he finds that there's this cell phone sitting on a... A stump. Now, if you recall, back in the end of chapter six, we saw that the evil murderer hunter, bounty hunter, is has caught them. He he knows where they are now, and everything in this uh, has to be on video. The guy who wants these people dead wants to see it. He wants to see it on video. Yeah. It's pretty, uh, pretty intense, pretty gross. But there's a, so there's this uh, cell phone and Xavier picks it up and it's got a message like to him. And it says, uh, you don't know what you're getting, you're in getting yourself into type of thing. And it's got a picture of buddy and wanted murderer. So he's a little kid. He should know better. He should trust buddy by now. Buddy saved his life several times. And they're starting to have this father-son bond. And, but he sees it and he, he spooks. And that's what this guy wanted him to do. And Xavier runs off. He starts running away through the forest, through the woods. And of course, who does he run into but... Yeah, the killer. The guy who's hunting them down. But also... <laughs> is this dude over here, the cop, the bad cop. And he comes in and he says, no, uh, you're not supposed to take him. I'm supposed to take him. So they start fighting over Z Xavier. And the cop just shoots the murderer. Bam, just shoots him in the back as he's walking away with Xavier over his shoulder. And Jim, you remember Jim. Jim is the guy that helped them out. Uh, part of this commune, this this this, you know, commune where they're living and, and hiding. Jim hears it 
and starts rushing because he heard the, the gunfire starts rushing to to this and so he gets involved then buddy fi wakes up buddy's like where's xavier he goes running through the commune Where, where's xavier nobody knows he he knows that he's run away he hears a gunshot he goes running off into the woods the the bad cop goes to get xavier and of course even though he shot the the crazy murderer dude i don't know his name um they don't really say his name in here i don't think anyways i don't know it and of course the guy isn't dead and he pulls out a knife and now they're fighting the, the cop and and the, the evil dude and then he's got him on the ground here yeah i'm not going to show you everything because it, it's pretty pretty scary and then the cop is saying you can't kill me um if you kill me then my body's going to be here and the people are going to be researching you and finding him. so he doesn't kill him but he takes off with the kid yeah it, it's it's craziness um buddy goes running you know after the kid the kid now is we see the kid that's in um a log cabin with the murderer with the the evil dude i'm i'm calling him the evil dude and the evil dude's being nice to him and feeding him, although he's tied up. And, of course, over in the corner, we see the owners of the log cabin. They've been stripped. They've been bound back to back together. And they're dead. Very reminiscent. Do you remember back in, like, chapter one when Buddy came to this house and he saw these people that were killed? And Drano was, was used down the one guy's throat. And they've got these pieces of, it looks like, you can't really tell in this art, the work. I can't show it to you. Um, but there's things stuck into their bodies. And it looks like little pieces of metal, which we find out is glass. So this sadistic bastard uh, likes to strip his uh, prey naked, bind them to a chair. He takes two light bulbs, smashes them together and takes pieces of the glass and sticks it into their bodies and their eyes and their face it yeah it's it's gross um and of course he's got his ever ready bottle of drano sitting on the the counter xavier sees this and is crying he's, he's freaked out well jim finds the dude the cop dude um and takes off to go save xavier he comes across this uh log cabin in the woods and so he's going to go and try to save xavier the people in the commune find the cop bring the cop the cop tells lies of course but he goes running off he eventually finds the uh, log cabin as well at the end here we see buddy coming upon the uh, cabin in the woods and he's going to of course rush in to save xavier Without any care in the world, he's just going to rush in, save the day, and then we're on chapter 8. Chapter 8, we see the evil dude and his trusty bottle of Drano, and of course, Buddy coming into the cabin. Alright, so we're in the cabin, and we're in chapter 8 now. It's dark, Buddy sees Xavier sitting with his arms tied behind his back in a chair. He seems to be out of it a little bit, but he's alive. Buddy rushes to him, and he's going to start untying him. It's dark, and then, boop, the lights go on, very, very bright, kind of blinds Buddy, and it's the evil dude, the, mur the, the murderer. And, yeah, he gets, there's blood everywhere, he sees Jim lying against the wall with his innards coming out of him because, yeah, the evil dude got Jim. And he sees the two owners of the cabin. <laughs> and then he sees the murderer, the evil dude, come up and he's got a hammer and bunk. He hits Buddy and knocks him out. Buddy comes to. 
it's nighttime out now, and now Buddy has had his clothes taken off, and he's got his arms tied behind a chair, and he sees the camera, the ever-present camera, so because he's going to film everything. And that's where we see he smashes two light bulbs together, and he takes the glass and starts sticking them in various parts of Buddy's body. Yeah, it's it's gruesome, it's violent, it's all done in like pictures form. It's just snap, 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 snap. We're watching it kind of like the him filming it. It's this crazy. <laughs> video that he's making when he kills people he goes to the drawer he pulls out some implements a knife a corkscrew he's going to do more nefarious things to buddy but buddy hears a noise and looks over his shoulder and guess what jim is not dead his guts are hanging out but he's not dead and he reaches over and and uses uh one of those shards of glass to give and he gives it to buddy all right so we do find out though that the uh evil dude was wearing a vest he so that's why when he got shot it didn't hurt him didn't kill him i mean i'm sure it didn't feel good then he comes over to buddy and he gets real close and buddy still has, got, has his underwear on of course the guy's got to take his underwear off so he he leans forward and he's going to take buddy's underwear off before he kills him, I guess. And Buddy moans, and the guy's like, what? And he's like, moans like he's saying something. The guy's like, what? And he leans forward. Buddy had that piece of glass. I don't know how he got it in his mouth, but because his hands are tied behind his back, I don't think Jim reached all the way and gave him the, I don't know, somehow he got the shard of glass in his mouth. And he rams forward with the glass sticking out of his mouth and jams it into the eye of the the evil dude. I, I can't show you the picture. And he screams and backs up now. <laughs> this is awesome. And so now he's he goes into the bathroom, the evil dude, and he's looking in the mirror. He's got this piece of glass sticking in his eye. So he's going to pull it out. While he's doing that, Jim is untying Buddy's hands. Don't ask me. Jim's got his guts hanging out, but he's going to save the day. And then when the killer comes back into the room, now a totally naked buddy jumps from the chair and they start fighting. They start duking it out. And the bad guy knows karate and gives him a karate chop. And buddy falls down and then he he grabs the uh, the tripod that's got the, the camera on it and he hits him with the tripod. Oh my gosh, this, it's, it's very violent, it's very bloody, it's very cinematic. I mean, again, page after page after page of, of no dialogue or anything like that. We're just looking at, at these amazing pictures. And he gets, <laughs> Buddy gets him down on the ground and guess what he grabs? The bottle of Drano. Yeah. Holy cow. And, and of course, here's Tad just like... <laughs> It's, it's bloody and gruesome and violent, and I'm just in it. I'm just, it's awesome. Yeah, Buddy uh, shoves the bottle of Drano. I, I, you got to read it. It's cool. And, of course, he saves Xavier. Chapter 9, finally, we go to Chapter 9. Chapter 9, we're in Puerto Penasco, Mexico. We see this is the guy who hired the original hit on Xavier's mother, if you remember. We see him here, and we see Buddy walking through a, looks like a, you know, like just downtown, a market, and buying fruits and vegetables and things. We're in Mexico now, so apparently, this is a little bit in the future, Buddy and Xavier have escaped to Mexico now. Are they going to be on the run forever? We don't know. Um, but Buddy went through the store, uh, the market, got some stuff. He's making breakfast for Xavier. And he says, hey, <clears throat> let us uh, I've got to go on an errand. You remember back in Chapter 1 when 
we, we see Buddy smoking a lot and he's coughing and he's coughing up blood. And now he's going to a pharmacy because he's got this urgent test result from back in Vancouver and he's coughing, coughing, coughing. He throws it, so he throws a cigarette away. He goes to the pharmacy apparently to get some medication for whatever he has. Um, we can only assume. And he gets back in the, the, he's got a Jeep now. He's driving the Jeep and what does he do? He reaches over and he lights up another cigarette. Yeah, he can't stop. Can't stop himself from doing it. Goes back home, he says, hey, Xavier, we're going out for a ride. They go around town. And this whole section is like, you know, the end of a horror movie where everything, they finally lived and everybody's happy and they're driving around and they go and they eat some shrimp and they go and they look at the beach and they have these tacos and buddy's eating them they're all smiles and happy and you know xavier's still not talking and again we've still got page after page after page of no dialogue or anything just watching these two go through you know downtown mexico and join the day together as father and son and it's beautiful the weather's beautiful of course um they go swimming they have fun in the surf and you know it's starting to get late they go up on top of a hill to watch the beautiful sunset over this uh, little mexican town and it's nighttime so they decide finally to go home it's beautiful outside they go back to where they're living and they walk in the door and bam this is buddy's mother remember we don't go see your mother They've got your mother surveilled. They're surveilling her. They probably have killed her. This is what he's assumed. And But now, all of a sudden, here she is in Mexico, in their apartment, sitting on his couch. She's got dirty sneakers. Oh, my gosh. What? And he just says, but he says, Mom, I, I just, I, I can't wait. I, my my mo mouth hit the, hit the floor again. My jaw hit the floor again. And I just want to keep reading this. We said we were doing three chapters every two weeks. We only have two chapters left. So we've got one more episode left of this. We're going to find out what happened. It does wrap it all up. There's only 11 total chapters. And then we've got tons of stuff in the back. Artwork and sketches and dialogue. You know, like... like um, information from the writer to the artist of you know what he's wants the scenes how he wants them to be set up and what they're supposed to show with his artwork very interesting um i can't read it wait here are the guys at rick remender um andre lima arajo and chris o'halloran here um yeah it, it's i'm just i I'm geeking out over it. I'm loving it. I can't wait to see the next two chapters and the conclusion of a thirst, a righteous thirst for vengeance. I hope you stick around and watch that next video. I hope you check out Gross's channel. Of course, I will link that in this video. And like always, if you find any entertaining value in my videos, please like, subscribe, leave me comments, and go check out my Folio Society giveaway for my 500 subscribers. Check out that video. Make a comment on that video. You don't have to subscribe or anything. Just make a comment and say peace out. So, as usual, until next time, peace out.